Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the scariest and most thought-provoking horror films of the past 10 years. This will not include any movies that can primarily be classified as thrillers or comedies. A podcast takes a lot of work, okay? You have to organize the guests, you have to do a Google Calendar. Number 20, Talk To Me. Peer pressure can be a killer, a fact Mia comes to know all too well. In Talk To Me, the protagonist and her best friend Jade learn about a strange new trend amongst their friend group. Although it initially seems like it may just be a fun party trick, it is soon revealed to be a terrifyingly real gateway to the undead, as Mia grabs hold of a hand and comes face to face with a corpse. Run, 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 run. Despite the horrifying implications, Mia becomes addicted to the thrill of possession, hoping that she can find her recently deceased mother amongst the crowd. Sophie Wilde is giving her all in the film's lead role, pivoting from spine-chilling horror to devastating displays of grief with ease. I think that was your mom, Mia. No, it was at first. She used to call me Mia all the time. I mean, how would the spirits know that? Number 19, Halloween. Rebooting a beloved franchise is a tricky task. When Rob Zombie tried his hand at rebooting Halloween in 2007, it became a box office success, but a critical failure. Thankfully, David Gordon Green's 2018 requel fared better on both fronts. Although the director's sequels Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends have been met with mixed reviews from fans and critics alike, Green's initial Halloween was a smash hit. It kept the spirit of the original film alive, while adding a modern sense of humor that helped connect the 1978 story with a new generation. It also brought back Jamie Lee Curtis and Nick Castle as Laurie Strode and Michael Myers, resurrecting an iconic acting matchup that hadn't been seen in 40 years. Do you know that I pray every night that he would escape? What the hell do you do that for? So I can kill him. Number 18, Prey. The prequel we didn't know we needed. As the seventh film to be released in the Predator franchise, it's understandable that some fans approached Prey with a healthy amount of skepticism. But the film's dedication to melding franchise lore with historical authenticity led to it being one of the film series' most beloved entries. What do you think left those tracks? And skinned that snake, and before I fell, I saw lightning in the trees. Daru. There's something else out there. Even the toothbrushes were meticulously crafted to be era accurate. At a time when CG reigned supreme, Prey also opted to use practical effects for its iconic antagonist, and it paid off in a big way. The film has one of the franchise's most fearsome depictions of the Predator, and the suit's real-world physicality adds a layer of authenticity to the acting that can be lost in CGI-heavy productions. <laughs> Number 17, Suspiria. As an American remake of an Italian cult horror film by one of the best directors in the business, Dario Argento, Suspiria had the odds stacked against it. That it ended up being one of the most interesting horror films to come out of 2018 is nothing short of a miracle. Every arrow that flies feels the pull of the earth. But we must aim upwards. While it's true the film is divisive, it's hard not to appreciate its bold narrative departure from its predecessor. It is not a remake interested in simply redoing what came before. It evolves the material and twists it into something new. If nothing else, its transformation of Tilda Swinton into the unrecognizable Dr. Josef Klemperer is something to be admired. Suspiria's lack of a Best Makeup nomination at the Oscars was criminal. I don't know, but I do know you are living with dangerous people. Number 16, The Black Phone. You don't have to be scared. Because nothing bad is going to happen here. Beginning with its immaculately edited opening credit sequence, The Black Phone completely immerses audiences in its late 70s setting and builds on the real-world fear of child abduction. The late 2010s popularity of Stranger Things led to a boom in modern horror period pieces starring foul-mouthed teenage characters, and The Black Phone is one of the better stories to emerge from the trend. Based on a short story of the same name, the film portrays the capture and survival of a young boy named Finney, who finds a phone that connects him to the unnamed grabber's past victims. It's difficult not to become invested as each call adds another piece of the complex puzzle of information necessary for his escape. See the wall separated from the floor? Yeah. I tore a long cable loose from down there. I kept it hidden. Number 15, Terrifier 2. Horror is one of the few genres where audience members walking out can be seen as a badge of honor. 
this movie didn't just have people walking out. It apparently had some moviegoers leaving in ambulances. Do you have any idea how insensitive that is? Not to mention sick? Made on a crowdfunded budget of $250,000, Terrifier 2 was something of a passion project for Damien Leone, who had been developing its antagonist, Art the Clown, for close to two decades prior to its release. Clearly, the director's dedication paid off, as the film became a surprise hit despite its polarizing gore and violence, earning over $15 million in profits. Actress Lauren Levera played no small part in this mainstream success, providing the Terrifier franchise with its first fully fleshed out final girl, Sienna Shaw. You're right about everything. I was right about you, too. I'm not one. They used me to get you here. They need you in this place for a reason. Number 14, The Wailing. As a South Korean horror film with a runtime approaching three hours, The Wailing may appear to be an intimidating watch to more casual moviegoers. Fortunately, this supernatural horror is so intense and tightly written that you won't want to peel your eyes away. <laughs> It focuses on the spread of an infection that causes people to harm those around them indiscriminately. Thought to be brought into Kuksung by a demon taking the form of a Japanese man, the disease leads to mistrust among the community as a series of motiveless murders pile up. At one point, an intense exorcism is even attempted to rid the protagonist's daughter of the supposed infection, but it cannot stop the unrelenting horror brought by the red-eyed demon. <laughs> Number 13, Barbarian. There's no denying Barbarian's dark sense of humor, but its well-crafted scare still place it firmly in the horror category. An Airbnb mix-up begins this sordid tale of decades-old secrets, and to say that travelers Tess and Keith are unprepared for what awaits them in their unexpectedly shared living arrangement is an understatement. Someone else is down here. What? Someone bit me. A series of narrative twists and turns keeps the characters and viewers on their toes, as the film slowly unravels the barbaric truth behind the Brightmoor home, that the true monster is not the disfigured woman keeping people captive, but a relatively normal-looking father is just one of many brilliant subversions by this clever modern horror. <laughs> Number 12, The Autopsy of Jane Doe. It opens with a mystery. Father-son coroners Tommy and Austin have been tasked with finding out what happened to create the horrific crime scene in the film's opening. Judging by the progress it made through his bloodstream, he was already dead by the time somebody blew his face off. Their first autopsy is more graphic than one you'd see on a primetime crime show, but otherwise, fairly run-of-the-mill. But when they start examining the Jane Doe, they begin to find anomalies. Dread begins to set in as more and more interior injuries fail to match up with the condition of the corpse's body. By the time Tommy and Austin realize something supernatural is afoot, it's already too late. The film's horror concept is uniquely terrifying, and its open-ended final scene is sure to leave viewers on edge long after the credits roll. When we cut into her, she tried to stop us each time. It's like there's something she doesn't want us to find. Number 11, Pearl. In 2022, Ty West gave us two original horror films, X and Pearl. Part of a film series also titled X, the movies had unique, well-rounded characters and aesthetics inspired by films of the past. While there is some debate as to which entry comes out on top, we tend to prefer the Technicolor terror that is Pearl. Taking cues from the classic Hollywood era, particularly The Wizard of Oz, Pearl is a spine-chilling subversion of a visual style typically associated with screwball comedy and exaggerated melodrama. You're not gonna leave me here! I'm not staying on this farm! And of course, the translation of Pearl from the murderous granny in X to a bright-eyed German immigrant with big dreams could not have been achieved without the trilogy star, Mia Goth. She absolutely kills it. Seems like there's something missing in me that the rest of the world has. Number 10, The Invisible Man. It's some kind of suit that Adrian has built. And it has cameras and it somehow, what? Dracula, Frankenstein, and the Wolfman are among Universal's more recognizable classic monsters. Typically, The Invisible Man doesn't get nearly as much love from the studio. So it was interesting to see his story updated for a more contemporary crowd. Unlike the 1933 film, 2020's The Invisible Man does not cast its titular character as the protagonist, opting instead to follow the deteriorating mental state of a woman who is terrorized by him. 
This radical perspective change allows for the movie to act as a metaphor for the horrifying reality of abuse and its traumatizing effects. It's a whole new layer of depth to a once simplistic story of a man corrupted by power. There you are. <laughs> Number 9. Raw College can be an important time of transition and self-discovery. Unfortunately for Justine, her first week at veterinary school leads her to discover a taste for human flesh. C'est de la viande. C'est un rat de lapin. Vaut mieux pas le savoir avant, en général. Mais le truc, c'est que moi, je suis végétarienne. Je peux pas manger ça. The main character of Raw, Justine, initially struggles against her newfound craving before finally giving into her desires in increasingly daring ways. The movie depicts this descent in gory, grotesque detail that is certain to make even the most seasoned horror fans squirm in their seats. The fact that Raw is the feature debut of its director, Julia Ducourneau, only makes its skin-crawling horror all the more impressive. Following in the footsteps of David Cronenberg, Ducourneau has brought back the body horror better than ever. Number 8. A Quiet Place If you've ever wondered how long you can hold your breath, try this 90-minute horror on for size. While we don't advise doing this literally, it may be hard to stop yourself as the palpable tension builds in a quiet place. In lieu of much spoken dialogue, this film relies on a thrilling score and expert sound design to build its apocalyptic world. This is because the film's nameless alien antagonists use super hearing as their primary means of finding prey. While some films of this nature may have relied on the written word for communication between characters, A Quiet Place is notable for casting a deaf actress in a leading role and teaching its hearing cast to appear fluent in American Sign Language. Number 7. It Follows Having sex in a horror film is a recipe for disaster. In Scream, Randy even lists it as the first of three rules to surviving a horror movie. Number one, you can never have sex. <laughs> Big no -no. It Follows takes the trope up a notch, giving its characters the ability to pass their nightmarish stalkers on like STDs. Understandably opposed to transferring her fate over to an unsuspecting victim, Jay does everything in her power to try and kill off her ever-changing followers without hurting anyone else. See, everything's okay. Her quest plays out like a bad dream that's impossible to wake up from, complete with an unclear sense of time and space. We'd hate to be a part of it, but we'd be lying if we said we didn't want one of those shell phones. Number 6. A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night for her first feature-length film, Anna Lily Amirpour invites audiences into an enchanting black-and-white world that plays with societal ideas about vampires and womanhood. Its small crowdfunded budget forced Amirpour to be creative in the film's construction, but didn't hinder its stylish visuals or its strong feminist themes. <laughs> She even shot the Iranian set film in California to avoid any censorship of its content, which includes controversial subjects like sex work, drug use, and generational trauma. An eerie atmosphere haunts every moment of this slow-paced horror, adding a healthy dose of fear to its significant social messaging. Number 5. It oh. Hi, uh, Georgie. Unless you've been living in the sewers this past decade, you're likely aware of this 2017 Stephen King adaptation. Upon release, the film held the record for the R-rated film with the biggest theatrical opening, boasting over $200 million in profits. While some of the success can be attributed to the movie's extensive marketing campaign, it also must be said that it's just that good. Well, though, down here. Yes, we do. <laughs> Bill Skarsgård brilliantly brought to life Pennywise, striking fear into a new generation with updated scares and a whole new look, while the teen actors helped carry the film's necessary emotional weight. Along with Skarsgård, Sophia Lillis received the brunt of the film's praise, including several individual award nominations. This is what it wants. It wants to divide us. We were all together when we heard it. That's why we're still alive! Number 4. The Witch Wouldst thou like to live deliciously? Robert Eggers' slow burn horror might not be for everyone, but for those in tune with his dark aesthetic and sinister sensibilities, it's nothing short of a masterpiece. 
Set in 1600s New England, The Witch focuses on an exiled family who become the victims of a series of devastating misfortunes, beginning with the death of their newborn child. Though it's hard to believe given the plethora of top-notch performances she's delivered afterwards, the film also starred Anya Taylor-Joy in her feature film debut as the family's daughter, Thomason. You are a hypocrite! Oh, thy tongue, daughter mine! You took Caleb to the wood and let me take the blame of that too! Is that true? Eggers would later go on to highlight the talents of Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson in the tense psychological thriller, The Lighthouse. This ain't funny. No, it ain't. And I ain't wanting to be stranded here with some damn lunatic. Number 3. The Babadook Whether or not you see the Babadook's titular antagonist as a metaphor for grief or depression, or both, there's no denying its extraordinary take on the horror genre. Notably, it is a film that is as sympathetic as it is scary, a breath of fresh air in a sea of genre films eager to undermine their mentally unstable heroes. This makes it stand out from the crowd of not only its predecessors, but those who attempted to mirror its success with similarly analogous monsters. You're not my mother! I am your mother! The delivery of the fearsome Babadook's background is equally inspired, as the audience is introduced to his mythology through the unsettling illustrations in a children's story. This is what he wears on top. He's funny, don't you think? See him in your room at night. <laughs> Number two, get out. Get out! Yo! Ah! Yo, chill, man. Get out! Chill! Yeah, chill! Chill, man! After establishing himself as an actor and comedian, Jordan Peele made a surprising career turn with Get Out. Beginning as a darkly comedic psychological thriller, the film's biggest antagonist initially appears to be racism. This is, of course, still the case by the film's end, but its shocking last act twist really brings the terror to a whole new level. With an instantly gripping script and stellar performances, it should come as no surprise that Get Out became one of the few horror films to be nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars. Peele would follow this success up with the equally impressive Us and Nope, becoming one of the decade's best and most consistent horror directors. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Green Room. A punk band realizes too late that something ain't right about their new venue. I told you to follow. <laughs> Megan. This Dolly's dance moves are deadly. What are you doing? Three eyes won't look from him. Can paralyze with this face. Dr. Sleep. Mike Flanagan mixes King's words and Kubrick's vision for this unique, shining successor. It was you. She saw your eyes in me, and she'd have to look away. Titan, a compelling argument for practicing abstinence with cars. <laughs> Host, COVID restrictions inspired this creative computer horror. Regina! Regina, Regina, Regina! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Hereditary And I know it was an accident, and I know you're in pain, and I wish I could take that away for you. I wish I could shield you from the knowledge that you did what you did. Annie is not okay. Following a sudden death in the family, the grieving mother begins lashing out at her son Peter and turning to supernatural means to communicate with the one she lost. The already horrific situation ramps up in intensity, culminating in a climax that still gives us nightmares. The film's uniquely volatile portrayal of generational trauma was a smash hit for indie studio A24, and even heralded by one critic as the scariest movie of 2018. This was painted above the body, right? In blood! Director Ari Aster's follow-up folk horror, Midsommar, took things up a notch in the shock department, but Hereditary remains his masterpiece and the gold standard for all horror films that follow in the next decade. Did we miss any of your favorites? Let us know in the comments. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.